to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you today. The Cardboard Bear Extraordinaire. Oh. <gasps> Jay Rizzler. <laughs> Jay Rizzler with us on this fine Wednesday. He's looking good today, particularly good today. I was realizing, Mike, that uh, with Jason out the rest of the week, Jay Grizz, a.k.a. Jay Rizzler. Yeah. <laughs> Is going to need to wear the clown. Oh. The clown wig. You are correct. Sorry, yeah. Jay. Yeah. So. Rules well, are rules. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to affect his riz. I. You know what I mean? I don't know. We'll see. A big furry grizzly bear? In yeah. A, in a clown wig? Yeah. It could work. It could work. I Wednesday. Won't, I won't be wearing a clown wig. I'll tell you that much. October 9th. No. Uh, Joe Burrow was was pretty good yes he was you see uh i will be and that is due to the <laughs> fact that the eight targets for zachary oh, eight just... eight targets i was tracking two catches and i don't know if you saw the play in the middle of the game too like earth's had a big time play that Jaden daniels missed him on but uh today is wednesday we have nfl news to talk about some big injury news uh <sighs> hungry for more on today's show we are doing a fantasy draft redo. Two rounds today. Kyle the Borgogan will join us. It's almost like giving you a rest of season rankings for the first 24 players because we're going to give it another shot, Mike. Yeah, it's – and usually I'm really excited for this episode. Like it's a it's a fun look. It's where guys were at the beginning. you got to change your opinion. Call your shots on, on rest of season. But these are – Caddy Wampus of like superstars, and I don't know if I don't know if a redraft happened right now. You would take them in the first two rounds. Well, it's, we'll talk about them. I mean, it, it's 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 like extra difficult this year. I think with some of the situations injury wise, it is extra difficult for sure, and um, it'll be fun. I I don't know. You know, I've got my list put together. You've got your list. Kyle has his. And I'm not sure how aligned they're going to be because of what you're saying. So uh, we're going to be doing it live, on the fly. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I mean we're doing it doing it today. So fantasy draft redo coming up. You can check out the tools resources available to you at jointhefoot.com. Uh, I did see the current Megalobowl leader. I want to shout it out. Over twenty thousand of you playing in this year's Megalobowl. Garbage time. Oh yeah. Uh. Oh, the garbage hey. man can. Garbage time. Garbage man is, I feel like it's not shown up in a long time. Yeah, we forget That's about it. That's good stuff. We need to get that back, the garbage man drop. But no, garbage time has 817 points. I, uh, my, my streak ended finally. I am nine and one now in the middle uh, of all. Okay. That's still pretty good. Um, uh, pretty disappointed. Missed the median. How's the, uh, how's the Falcon dump doing? Uh, it's dumping. Oh, oh no. Or yeah. she rice. Uh, yep. Yeah, that'll hurt. That'll hurt. So uh, congrats, Garbage Time. You're in the lead right now. All of the weekly rankings, the start hit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. New Dynasty podcast out today if you want to check that out. I know you guys were talking about uh, what Stefan Diggs came up on the show. We, we were talking uh, just some guys that we, at this point, would be looking to trade for, trade away. Always like to to make a run. Yeah, you know, in a I'll, dynasty league. Always a little difficult because dynasty is so specific to just your particular league, the way that teams are shaped up, and if they have these players or not. But it would it was an excellent excellent episode, a lot of good discussions, and then uh, one of the guys we talked about, uh, I'll just Tony Pollard was a running back I brought up that I think is a good trade target if you're making a push because just every all you know cost versus upside. And right after Matthew Betts, by the end of the show, had had pulled off a trade for him at like slightly under the value we were talking about. So these things are happening. All right, let's jump in. Uh, 
Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. While waiver wires are going through, we've got our Hungry for More candidates this week. And I, I went with one of the guys that was at the tippy top of the waiver list for wide receiver. I went with Jalen Tolbert, wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. All right. This is a player who last week, seven for 87 and a touchdown. Brandon Cooks is out for at least three weeks. The numbers right now in Dallas, they're third in red zone plays overall. They're second in passing attempts per game. And maybe more interesting, and it doesn't really mess up my rest of season, a little draft we're doing later, but did you know right now CeeDee Lamb is 19th in points per game at the wide receiver position through five weeks? He's averaging 12.8 points per game. Jalen Tolbert right now already at 9.3 points per game. So there's a three-point-per-game difference between Jalen Tolbert and CeeDee Lamb five weeks in. You're talking about a huge opportunity in a pass-first offense. Jalen Tolbert seems very startable to me right now. Yeah, I, I do think that we are at that, especially while Brandon Cooks heals up from a knee infection, which sounds – disgusting <laughs> like i mean of all the places you know like on your knee or in your knee i don't know it just sounds bad so uh, but, but yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I agree not, i don't mean to laugh but that your delivery there um <laughs> detroit this week huge over under i'm hungry for more jalen tolbert i think the opportunity is right in front of you like you cannot i think they're throwing the ball 41 42 times a game I mean, they, okay, so give Lamb how many? 15 targets? 10? 12? You've got a lot to go around. I, yeah, I think, we do. I think Jalen Tolbert is – Yeah, I'm hungry for more top 15 performances from him. Uh, the Cowboys passing offense just – I mean, they, they're pretty good at giving us fantasy goodness. Yeah, so uh, you have another wide receiver here. I do, and I hopefully you follow us on the Twitter sphere because news – At the FF Ballers. The, the news broke – yesterday that Drake May was going to start and that's not who I'm hungry for more of because I haven't seen anything but it's Jalen Polk who I had kind of uh you know over the off season was uh you know the the, the drum beat for him was steady it was not a, a not quick and loud but it was steady over the off season of people are ignoring this player who was taken 37th overall by the New England Patriots seemingly to be their number one wide receiver with a brand new quarterback. Like this is a situation you want to get in at the ground floor because the price is so cheap and the upside, it really exists for, I mean, like he was a really good prospect coming out of Washington and over he, they've made him earn it. The Patriot way. That's fine. They, they've made him earn the, the starting wide receiver position where it started off really slow up until last week against Miami he led the team in routes run, a 100% route participation. He saw six targets, only had the one catch, almost had a miraculous. Yeah, nobody taught him to put both feet down. Well, they did. It, no, it's the stupid freaking NFL rule of somehow. Can, can we talk about that, actually? Oh, oh, please. Are, are, have people moved on to my side? That would be great. All I'm saying is that there, it, it's an inconsistent and terribly yes. applied rule because what the rule is is that if you are – if you're toe tapping on the sideline, let's say you're going towards the football, uh, towards the sideline, you can put your tippy toes down. Yep. And you're in. If you are coming down in the back of the end zone or on the sideline, and you are coming backwards, you need to and you touch the toe. You also are forced to touch the heel. The foot, whole foot, needs to come down. It makes that's, no sense. That's the rule. Now, if we ask the catch child whether it's a catch, <laughs> yeah, it's a catch. Uh, the catch child would say it's a catch. Yes. The biggest problem is is that with that Jalen Polk near touchdown to win, by the way. Right. Um, with that play, I started thinking about it. Like if Jalen Polk had lifted his foot up, so he touches the toe and then lifted the foot up, that would have been a catch. Yes. But because he completed – putting the foot down it's not a catch and if he had so, if he had touched his toes and then his toes slid out correct then somehow that's a catch too like what in the world is going on it's the most preposterous rule to me yeah. of and, and if his toes hit 
and somehow like he crumpled in a in such a position that his elbow hit out of bounds. Yes, it's also a catch. Like how? Why is the why is it got to be the whole foot if you're saying that toes count? It it, it can't be the whole foot only when your momentum goes a certain direction. Yeah, that, that's I hate inconsistent. that rule. But I on, hate that rule. On. But but that, but that's what happened. So you're hoping that maybe and Drake May yes provides. It's the, it is the unknown upside. Uh, look, Jacoby Brissett is a – I think he's a good backup quarterback, but Drake May has a huge arm, and that's what we need for fantasy football. We need someone who's going to challenge the defense vertically, and Jalen Polk is their number one guy. I get – like, Kendrick Bourne's coming back. That's fine. He's not going to be their number one guy. And just saying that this is – this is some real upside here for cheap. Probability, very low, of course, but it doesn't matter at this point – Look, looking on your waiver wire, who's a player can, that can go from pure nothingness into very relevant? It's just a handful of names, and why not bet on some really talented rookies? There are two two rookies right now in the top 10 at wide receiver in terms of points per game. Actually, sorry, three. Malik Neighbors yeah. at number two. Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, yes, of course. At number course. seven. And, um, and Marv sneaks in. I thought Marv was Marv might not be in there by points per game. Marv might only be in there by total. I saw Marv at nine this morning, but I think that was not points per game. But I mean, it, it just shows you that you can make a quick impact as a yes. rookie. Um, it is, it, you know, the odds are against it, but that's why you're hungry for more. Mm -hmm. All right, that was hungry for more presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats, the official on demand delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, um, do we have any sad music, Al? Because I feel like it's worthy of it at this point in time. The NFL's <sighs> receiving leader, Nico Collins, has been placed on injured reserve. Thank you. From With a hamstring injury. From elite touchdown to the tent to ruled out, to day-to-day, -to, -day, to week to week, to missing a minimum of four games in So what's next? Oh. Amputation? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you dare, my sweet Nico. So, uh, look. Gosh darn it. It's disappointing. Uh, four weeks at uh. least. So everyone's quick reaction, which is appropriate, is, is this the time when Tank Dell takes up the mantle? I mean, Tank Dell... It has been a disappointment, but I want to give him two excuses. Maybe three. Okay. Okay. Is that enough? I don't know. I mean, let's see if I agree. Number one, he was shot in the offseason. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, like, that, legit. I mean, maybe, maybe your training regiment got a little bit, you know, upside down uh -huh. if you, every time you're shot. Number it two. Dealt with an injury this year. So on the field, already dealt with an injury, missed a game. You're coming back into form again. And and again, we're five weeks in. There's a reason we're doing a fantasy draft redo, but we're five weeks into a long season. And number three, opportunity. Like Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, we knew it would be a little messier. I think you are missing the biggest one. I Of course I am, Mike. What was I about to say? He broke his ankle last year. Like, that is true. That, I, so he came off an injury last year and got one this year and got shot, and he's got competition. The He broke it. If, if you re recall, everyone, what happened, Tank Dell was on his way to a a legit breakout rookie campaign. It was so Goes in for a amazing. block. Gets, I, I believe he was, he was rolled up on, breaks the ankle. Yeah, Damian Pierce's fault. I'm and, just choosing to blame him. I And also but, D'Amico Ryan's. I'm, I'm writing a little, myself a little note of remember this because we all think about injuries like in the NFL when you hear oh it was just a it's just a clean bone break we're like hey that's not ligament damage he'll re he'll recover he'll be back to full strength I mean how many of these guys with with busted ankles like uh, uh, Tony Pollard took him a while like we just we we that's hoped the same injury. Yes. That was the fibula. We we hoped it would be just fine, but it took him a – he wasn't the same. And, I mean, look at Tony Pollard now. He's looking very good. Not that it is everything, but Mark Andrews, a very similar injury, 
and his usage and everything. I'm is, not familiar with that player. His usage, yeah, well, no one is anymore. Usage is way no, down. I can't place the name, but go on. Tank Dell, broken, like a fibula. So perhaps this injury, we need to take it a little bit more serious when we're when we are injecting risk into what's going to happen for this player. And honestly, I have no problem like popping the balloon on a player that I don't think is going to perform rest of season. Like I'm not in on Mark Andrews. I think the gap between what we're getting and what we need is too far with That's this fine. offense. Yeah. But I am happy to tell you I think Tank Dell's going to be okay, everyone. Like Stephon Diggs is in not in his prime. It, it, Tank Dell's going to be the downfield threat. Yes. And so I, I'm excited about his opportunity. I do think he'd be a buy low. And again, if you want a hot trade tip, the way you get Tank Dell, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is not to go and offer a one-for-one -for, -one for Tank Dell or something stupid like that. Everybody knows this Nico Collins news. The way that you get Tank Dell is you make a bigger deal, and Tank Dell's a part of the bigger deal. If you want to try to go get that player... The, old, the Trojan horse. You Trojan horse him into these deals. You cannot be on the nose, people. You cannot just be right on the nose. you got to have... The conversation begins like this, Mike. You've got Tank Dell. Okay. Great. Oh, man. This, right. guy, this, guy has been, this guy has been a bum. He's been a bum. Listen, Mike. Whoa. Did you hear Nico Collins is hurt? Yeah. Surge in value. It's crazy. Uh, By the way, I need a tight end. Do you have a tight end? No, because nobody does. Okay. Do you have one for me? It's a bad example. <laughs> Crap. You're really ruining I'm, our... I'm like, starting Mark Andrews. By the way, I need to upgrade my quarterback. Oh, there... Right. Do you have yeah. a quarterback? You've I, got... Oh, I sure you do. you got a quarterback. Why don't I do, uh, you know, my quarterback and uh, who's somebody that, that that's dominating right now that's going to fall off the map? Uh -huh. I'm going to give you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to give you Kyler Murray. Okay. And I'm going to give you Jameson Williams. Wow. And I want you to send me back. I would I'm gonna send okay. me back Lamar Jackson and Tank Dell. And oh, let's do no. that deal. No, let's not do send that. Send me deal. back Joe Burrow and Tank <laughs> Dell. Send me back uh, Jaden Daniels and Tank Dell. <laughs> You're, You're telling not, me people aren't going to – the value of Jamison Williams today is higher than Tank Dell today, no question. Yes. That deal gets – I'm saying that those, deal could get those quarterbacks are too high up, though. you got to be like – You're telling me that you wouldn't – you think Joe Burrow's permanent state is where he's at? Can, I mean, it's not like Kyler Murray and him are far apart in points per game. They are They are not. So but, I'm just saying, like, if you're getting the better deal, you're really – you're blowing this up. I, you're supposed <laughs> to be acting with me. I am. Well, I am. I'm being the. I'm being the devil's advocate. Right. Well, listen. That's the. That's the concept. If if you're like Mike, I get it. Who has Joe Burrow everywhere and believes he, you know, and Mike sniffs his farts, then you know we're good. When you win two weeks in a row because, because of, of Joe, Burrow, Joe Burrow, yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> you're feeling pretty good. Rashi Rice is out. Yeah, for the rest of the season. We said it yesterday. I had somebody ride in right away and say, whoa, chill out. He's not going to be out. He's out. He's gone. Patriots starting Drake May. Derek Carr is going to miss multiple games, and the team is turning to preseason sensation. <laughs> okay. All right, let's bring it back. <laughs> like Al, you go find it. Oh, yeah. You go find it. Oh, we got to repurpose it. Spencer Rattler is going to be the – I got a snake, man. He's going to be the starter. <laughs> we got to go into the deep, deep ar <laughs> archives. I got a snake, man. Yeah, Spencer Rattler is back. Or well, whatever. Sorry. The snake drop. The snake drop is back. Uh, I like Spencer Rattler. We'll see if he can strike. I mean, right now they are throwing the football the least in the NFL. They're running, oh, that's going down. They're running more than anybody. So, uh, you know, it doesn't make you – right now the feeling on Chris Olave, spoiler alert, he's not going to be one of the top 24 picks today. Yeah. So the feeling around him, and Rashid Shahid has the special connection with Carr. I worry about him moving forward. Spencer Rattler's a rookie. You need to be worried. You know who you don't need to be worried about? Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara. Because he's the best friend. Because somehow, like, when a young quarterback, an unproven quarterback comes into the game, and they're running around for their life, Alvin Kamara becomes very large on their in their yeah. in their vision. Because he's always got some sort of separation from the linebacker in front of him. And Jalen Warren, Cordero, Patterson, both going to be out. Aaron Jones, week to week with a hip injury. Yeah, the the quote, look, he, he O'Connell was talking about Aaron Jones saying he avoided the long-term injury but said we're not sure he will be back for, I think it's Detroit next week. Kyle, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, which just 
if you got uh, I mean, if if you made the low investment to go get uh, oh my gosh, now his name is escaping me. Chandler, uh, Ty Chandler. Yeah. Uh, that perhaps you'll have a starter next week. All right. Uh, you guys have any other news? No, sir. And who exactly is the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints this week going to be? I got a snake, man. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get that graphic updated. Blake Bortles in the house. I just noticed that he's got – he's the graphic that comes up on the video. I just – I don't – the timing is so amazing because I got hit with – do you remember the – there was a video of Blake Bortles and some realtor taking him around, showing him a house – and they're like getting his reactions, and they're just they're, they're so amazing because the lady's like trying to hype. He's like, "Oh, what do you? What's like? What's the first thing you do in the morning?" He's like, "Oh, I'll probably take a piss." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah like, well, if you if you weren't if you weren't playing football, what would you be doing? Uh, you know, uh, working construction, ripping cigs. Oh my <laughs> like, gosh, dude, the videos. It's amazing if you've never seen it. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back with Thursday Night Preview and then our Fantasy Draft Redo. All right, we get the 49ers and Seahawks. Let's break it down. Thursday Night Breakdown. Oh baby. The 49ers at 2 and 3 taking on the Seattle Seahawks 3 and 2 in Seattle. 12th man in the building. DraftKings Sportsbook line San Francisco minus 3 and a half on the road. The over under is 49. Feeling fine. Okay. It's gone up. I this this game is incredible. It's really more of a who would I not play in this game? Yeah, let's do it that way then. Right now the division by the way, 3 and 2 Seahawks Cardinals and 49ers, two and three. The Rams are one and four. Again, I want to stress, Cardinals, 49ers, same record. Any thoughts on that? Um, hey, Falcon. Oh, Falcon? Yeah. No thoughts. Okay, mm. no thoughts. Uh, I'm not surprised. All right, Brock Purdy, disappointing week last week in a game that we expected big things. It, it makes you ask the question, Mike, you know, who would you not play in this game? Is, is Purdy a lock or would you go Cousins or Fields or Stroud? I'd go Cousins. The, Rattler. Not Rattler. <laughs> Stroud is, like, we didn't talk about the implications of for Stroud of. It's not great. Like, what happened? You, know, you lose who was currently the best wide receiver in football. That's definitely a, a downgrade for you. And I get it. It, was, it. it wasn't what we had hoped for for, uh, for Brock Purdy, but he's still back in for me as not an elite option, but still right there as, you know, top 12-ish. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jordan Mason is the RB5 on the year right now. He did have the big fumble last week, but you've got to play him. Kenneth Walker. Dude, the bone zone is open, man. I uh, it, it wasn't great on the ground, but what we are getting from Walker through the air is it, seven catches. That's got to be near a career high. He it probably is. He's at a 14% target share right now. It's like when I made the. When I was caping for Walker as my fantasy MVP, it was, I think we can get to a 10% target share. Like, I think we can get there and maybe a little bit above it. And week one was 12. Week four against Detroit was only nine, but then 21%. Like, he. Do you realize that Charbonnet has 10 targets and eight catches in the last two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. He's getting like, plenty of work. They're too. throwing the ball to the, the running back a ton. This is what Grubb told us he was going to do this. And he's coming through big time. So I'm. Kenneth Walker, it's. That's it's a grub so, dub, baby. It's it is. He was five for nineteen on the ground. That's catastrophically bad. And he was the running back twenty one. He still made it to eleven points. JSN has only one top thirty performance on the year. Is so this he, a game where you're going to He's the him and Juwan are like the what do you do? Juwan Jennings? Yes. What do you do with these fringe guys if you're in the deeper formats? I think JSN's fine in a game with this high of an over-under. He's still, despite the fact he's not having prolific weeks, he's averaging 9.2 fantasy points per game. Juwan Jennings is not somebody I'm looking to start. Yeah, is the, just uh, because I'm 
I'm the, gonna the need pixie a, dust wore off here. I mean, he's a really good player, but at at the end of the day, you're if you had a flex spot, you'd be going, you know, Mason. You'd be going Samuel. You'd be going Ayuk. You'd be going Kittle. So then you're talking about the fifth flex option on this team. It doesn't mean he's not startable in a pickle. It just means that you are playing with fire a little bit. And, you know, Shanahan said he wants to get Juwan Jennings more targets. But, look, you know what this offense is like. In your bottom, your your floor for Juwan Jennings, it's yeah. nothing. And you when you combine that with was, was that the jump start against Arizona that Brandon Ayuk needed? Because 8 for 147 is – I feel like that's the, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I remember throwing to fat, this guy. Fat Thor back in shape. Yeah, possibly. And George Kittle's the number one tight end right now in points per game through five weeks. George Kittle is the man. Yeah. Tyler Lockett has not finished in the top 24, so he's a uh, kind of a lower floor play option. He is involved. The Would you Do you want him or JSN? JSN? So it's interesting. I would want JSN. They are not far off in terms of their production. They're not far off in terms of their target pace, but I would take Jason. So trying to look at total just yardage. Whoa. <laughs> so it, it was just I thought it was exact. Whoa. I thought it was identical, but it's not. So Tyler Lockett's at two hundred and seventy four yards on the year. Jason is at two fifty seven. But he does have the one he has the one huge game and one touchdown. That's the way I'd go. I mean, it's a very exciting game. It should be good for fantasy. Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks first in the NFL in pass rate. And Geno's leading the league in passing yards, completions, and attempts. So he is actually – like, I'd play him over Purdy. Geno? I would. At home. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I think I'd go Purdy. Okay. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about in this game? I mean, Debo is really disappointing. It he, doesn't he matter. He missed a week. And then the weeks before, he was pretty, you know, weak wide receiver 42 and 76. You're still confident? I, well, I'm still confident that he's a great player. The it, We got back to the old Shanahanigans of I focus on one guy for the game plan, and that, that was clearly Ayuk last week or where Debo saw three targets. It was that, weird. Yeah, two, the first two weeks were great for Debo, and then since the, the two weeks back after the injury, it's been a little slow. All right. You want to move on to our fantasy draft review? Not really. I know. You're, like, not ready for this. <laughs> nor are you. Near, nor are no, I, I mean, the button has been pushed. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> do, 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 fantasy footballers. <laughs> That sounded like strong bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, Mail bad. Try and push it again. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Whose fault was that? Uh, I think it was my fault for hitting it before the show. I'll take the blame. Um, was it a one-time use only button? All right, you're right. It's Al's fault. Thank you for pointing that You're out. welcome. A one-time use button. <laughs> Can, it's a digital button. We've only licensed the drop once a week <laughs> to push it at any time. We didn't pay the price. Now, what's happening right now is that Al is very going to – he's going to be upset Yeah. because we're talking about the mistake, which uh, means he can't fix it in post. I liked the strong – And we're just going to keep talking about it. I liked the strong bad intro. Do, 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 do. <laughs> strong bad. Checking out the emails. <laughs> Uh, that joke is killing elderly, with two percent of our the audience elderly right now. Folks are enjoying that joke. <laughs> um, before we jump in, Kyle, you're on the line, aren't you? I am here. All right. Well, before we jump into our fantasy draft redo, top twenty four picks. Mike is going to pick first. I'll go second. Goodness Kyle third. Gracious. And we'll just go back and forth. Before we do that, I did mention on yesterday's show or on Monday's show that I wanted to go through the top five players at every position through five weeks right now in four point per touch uh per touchdown leagues quarterbacks right now this is points per game lamar jackson Jaden daniels baker mayfield jordan love joe burrow at running back it's saquon barkley alvin Kamara, derrick henry kenneth walker and kyron williams this was a minimum of three games played that's important by the way because if you didn't do the minimum joe flacco's like dominating the quarterback <laughs> position at wide receiver right now is Jamar Chase, Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, Justin Jefferson, and Jaden Reed. 
And at tight end is George Kittle, Dallas Goddard, Brock Bowers, Tucker Craft, and Isaiah Likely. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, that, that's a, that's ridiculous. All right, with the first pick of the 2024 Fantasy Draft redo. Yeah, I'm so curious about this player. I, yeah, if, I think it really could be a handful of guys, but I'm just going to stick with Jamar Chase. I figured you were going to do it. Like, I figured that's what you were going to do. You know, it... it it's not just the two games that have, have recently happened. That's just simply showing you this is the ceiling. He wouldn't be number one without him. True. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'm saying like the the other guys that we're going to talk about, can they hit on a weekly basis a Jamar Chase ceiling while still giving you a relatively safe floor? I, I, I don't think so. So I'm going to go Jamar. That would not have been my number one pick. Okay. That would have been number two for me. So, actually, at number one, it's not Saquon. The number one pick right now, if I was redoing it, would be Kyron Williams. Wow. Kyron Whoa, Williams. Oh, look at this guy. Kyron Williams would, would be number one. His the spicy. He, he's as safe of a touchdown um, play every single week, and this is a team that's going to be – Battling every single week, giving up points. Twenty-two opportunities a week for Kyron right now. Yeah, I mean, it's outrageous. I, I will take the L on the assertion that he was going to be in a timeshare. That assertion was based on the fact that Kyron Williams was you going to be stop after the first three letters, bro. He was going to be a punt returner. He's not a punt returner. <laughs> no, because he's a because he's a top tier running need, back. Be, because they need him. So Kyron is going to be the pick. Kyle, I'm curious your thoughts on those two and who you're going to go with. You guys went about this very different than I did, which makes it a good experience. But um, Saquon's my guy. That's who I would take. He's passed his bye, and 22 yeah. opportunities a game just feels super safe. Yeah, it, it, I did. I, Kyron got the pick ahead of Saquon for me in part because of Barkley's age and injury history and the fact that I'm not surprised it's a strong start for him in Philadelphia, but at the same time, we've had injuries to both wide receivers and he's older. And so that, that was the difference maker for me. But, um, but yeah, Saquon, you know, Kyle, the front runner, obviously going with the guy that's already in first. <laughs> that's kind of what no, we're doing I, I here. know, I know, I know, <laughs> but he's not here. So I just wanted to say something mean. Mike, you're at number four here. Chase, Williams, and Barkley. Who are you going with it for? I will take Justin Jefferson here. Interesting. Uh, he has been fantastic. We had four straight weeks of a touchdown. Add on top of that, look, Detroit, the Rams, the Colts, the Jaguars, those are the next four games after the bye week for Jefferson. So I think he is the – while Sam Darnold and struggled a bit against the Jets uh, this past week, Jefferson has remained in the top twenty-four every single week. He, he feel like he does. Like I was saying about Chase, maybe we don't have a two hundred and two ceiling for for Jefferson this year, but one hundred and fifty and two. That's very possible. All right, I'm going to go with a rookie at pick five. I'm taking Malik Neighbors at yep. pick five. Uh, Goodness gracious, he's just a target monster on a team that you know he's their entire offense. And so if you looked at just the first four weeks, he's on pace for – Mike, do you know the number? No. What if I told you it was 221 targets? <laughs> what if I told you he was on pace for 148 receptions, 1,640 yards, and 13 touchdowns? I mean, that is astronomical. So I'm going to go Malik Neighbors. There's more seasoned names out there that I could have picked, but you know, with Brees Hall and Bijan not climbing up this list as high as they were before – I'm going to take – I mean, running back wasn't an option here for me. I'm going to go Malik Neighbors. I totally get that. And if he gets that target share the way that the Giants are playing, he Malik, this will not be the only time he misses a game. <laughs> right. Because he just – Too much. Yeah, he's getting crushed. Kyle, who do you have at pick six? I think this is one of the points where you have to think, moving forward, what can they be? And so I would take CeeDee Lamb here. He's been the wide receiver, yeah. what did you say, Andy? 19, 18? 19. Yeah, at this point last year, he was the wide receiver 20. So it's the same thing. And then you remember that run, rest of the season. You're not getting the same insane target share. 
but he does have the second easiest wide receiver schedule moving forward, and they can't run the ball. I was actually – that would have been the closest pick with neighbors to me. So I, I love that pick. I think C.D. Lamb is one you don't want to miss right here. Uh, he It's not like he's been bad. He just hasn't had the 100-plus yard games. And yeah, he hasn't, hasn't gone boom yet. He he will. Don't worry about that. Mike, you're on the clock. C.D. Lamb was the pick. Well, that made the decision easier for me. Uh, don't for, don't forget about this guy because he's you know a little bit lower in the overall ranking since he's only played the four weeks. He's already had the bye week. Amon Ross St. Brown will be my next pick. Very Week one was a bit uh, – a, a lot of bits scary when you took someone in the first round and he ends up with six targets for – three catches and 13 yards. And then we went, oh, everything's okay because we got 19 targets the following week. Amon Ra is – it's still already – he's not in that Jamar Chase tier, it feels like. And yet he's still just so solid and so good uh, at basically every single week okay. except for week one. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally give us another running back. The first seven picks off the board, five were wide receivers – and I'm going to go with Derrick Henry. I'm going with Derrick Henry at pick. Interesting. At pick eight. Uh, this is this is not just a, a hot start to the season to me. This is an identity change for this team. Has he scored every week? Uh, seven times a week, I think, is what's happened I'll, so far. I'll vet it real quick. No, Derrick Henry's going to be the pick because I don't yeah, think. I don't, he, <laughs> it's, it's been outrageous, man. I don't think it's going to change. Seven total touchdowns. If there's ever a player you can. You know, we say that touchdowns are not a predictive stat. They are with Derrick Henry. Like, you can guarantee that they're going to happen. The identity of this team has basically – everyone's been erased from fantasy value. Andrews and Flowers and – like, they, they don't have players to rely on. It's Derrick Henry, and if they could have their dream, they'd play defense and he'd run for 200. So they, they said everything before the year, we're not going to be like Tennessee, and then they hand the ball to Derrick Henry 5,000 times. So Well, they were – they told the truth of, like – we're not going to have him on the field all the time because, yeah. you know, he's averaging 52% of their snaps. 52% of their snaps, but he gets over 20 opportunities it works, a game. It works for me, so I'll take him at eight. Kyle, you're on the clock at nine. Yeah, this was kind of where you drafted this player uh, in the offseason, like back of the first round. So Jameer Gibbs would be yep. my pick. Yeah, yep. He's passed his bye. It, it's been solid. I won't say great yet, but you have the upside – if Montgomery went down. I think he is the running back eight right now, seven or eight, depending on your scoring format. So, you know, he's kind of been lurking in the shadows with super solid performances and yet no monster. You know, he's he's got a th – he's the kind of player that can put 30 or 40 up in a week if it goes his way. So, like you said, also the, he, the He's injury. still been great, and it's just – it. David Montgomery – I don't think can keep scoring every single week because he has also done that. Well, and Dan Campbell came out and said, like, Gibbs is, you know, we're ready for it to grow even larger in terms of his role. Mike, you're back on the clock. This okay. is when – I think this is when it gets more interesting. Like, some of these picks here, you can mix the order up however you want, but I don't think there's a lot of disagreement in terms of – the players that we've drafted. Oh, my goodness. But here's where you start to look at rest of season, not necessarily just what we've gotten through the first five weeks, but, Mike, who do you who do you want to take here? Because I, I really don't know what name you're going to say. There, are, I don't know what name I'm going to say. This is what I'm talking about. This is this is such a strange point to of, – of, not strange to think about redrafting right now, but it's strange of where these players are with – Dodging injuries, quarterback injuries, players themselves getting hurt. And I th – oh, my goodness. I'm going to go <laughs> – I'm going to go James Cook right here. Interesting. Uh, I, like he, I, I think that he – look, he's one of – he's a, he's a my guy. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't hurt things at all. But he had, he had the stinker against Baltimore. But other than that, you know – three uh, a number two finish a number 11 a number seven finish the guy has been he's been excellent he's averaging almost 16 points a game and that includes a really bad game against baltimore all right so james cook is the pick yeah and it's like what is this what is this offense 
in Buffalo other other than James Cook. I, nothing else feels really secure. All right, this is this is where I'm going to have a really difficult time. Oh, James Cook not practicing today? That's cool. <laughs> what is what is this T Higgins? Right after I just, draft him? Just relax. It's Wednesday. Is it's you, Wednesday. Did you cause that? Probably. My bad everybody. Obviously Nico Collins would have been probably uh, drafted in the top 3. Yeah, he would have been picked already. Yes. Now you have to account for 4 weeks of missing time, so he's not going to be the pick here. I'm actually going to take a long view type of decision the way CD Lamb was picked at six. I'm going to take Tyreek Hill. Okay, I wondered. I'm going to take Tyreek Hill at 11, knowing that, look, we got a bye week this week, and then we could have two a back, I think, in week seven or eight. I think it's week eight. It's week eight. So you've so got you, one you more. You have at least, you don't have him this week. You don't have him next you week. You don't I mean, really you do, have him next week. You'd still play him. He was six or 69 on nine yeah. targets last week. And, and I mean, that's, it's calling your shot for I'm sure. Going, I want the best wide receiver or one of the best wide receivers in football with his quarterback when the go, when it's time to win games. You've got a lot of fantasy season left. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. Kyle, I am curious if he would have been in contention for you. No, he he's on the list. Just I have no idea where I would, should have taken him, where he was supposed to go. But uh, And that's – look, it's Tua. We hear he's going to be back week eight. We hear that. Like, that's what I'm planning on, but I think those plans could change. It'll, Tua could get out there, start practicing in full, and, and be like, oh, no, things were actually not okay yet. So there's risk. Yeah, okay. definitely. I believe there's, there's people that are trading right now for Tyreek. I see it in our Discord, and they are like 4-1 and one or 3-2, and two, and they're like, can I trade for Tyreek from the manager who is scared or they're 1-4? and four? And I feel like that's a spot where yes. a lot of people can – can take advantage of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I have a winning record right now, I'm for sure trying to go get Tyree Kill. I'm trying to make plans for the playoffs. All right. Makes sense. Right. Who's the pick? Uh, pick 12. I'm, I promise. I promise this is not a homer pick. But I, I think yeah, I'd take Bijan. Okay. Okay. I, he, he has the third <laughs> easiest schedule rest of season. He's still seeing over 30% of the team's total rush attempts and targets. So, like, it's there. You're just waiting for it, to, and it's Carolina this week. So I think Bijan belongs somewhere between 12 and 15 to me. I don't disagree. I, I I think on Monday, Mike, we had talked about with Jason Brees or Bijan rest of the season. My answer was Bijan. Is that your answer? Um, Or is this transformation a head coach changed what Brees the, is going to bring? I think the head coach change for the Jets to me is essentially neutral, which uh, if you – didn't hear the rumor mill, ladies and gentlemen. It got Moy Caliente this morning as the reports allegedly – I'm only sharing this because it's just so much fun uh, – that uh, Coach Sala had had said or someone found out he was about to remove Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator, from play call duties. And then the Uno reverse card was thrown. Yeah. And they said, no, you're fired. <laughs> that's a little more than the, just the reverse guard, man. That is, um, that's just like we're gonna ask you from the they, building. It's things aren't going well up there for the New York management. No, it's uh, just, but between Bijan and Brees, I guess I guess I'll go Bijan. Just the the offense looking like they're alive for the Falcons. I like that they're throwing more because I would rather Bijan get targets instead of rushing attempts. All right, well, um, Mike, you're on the clock. Man, so I believe that the number one overall running back still has not been selected. <laughs> is Camaro really is is Camaro at number one still? Uh, I'm gonna vet. that. I don't think he's at number one. No, uh, he's at number two. I apologize. Yeah, terrible. Uh, yeah, Derrick Henry, the the king, is at number one, and I still don't want to draft Alvin Kamara. Well, you got to change at quarterback. Yeah, that does. But Camara's impervious things. to most things. The offense doesn't look good. What are you going to do? I mean, you'd be making the call over Brees, obviously. Yeah. Over Achan, over James Conner, over oh Monty. My goodness gracious. This is absurd, ladies and gentlemen. This is fully absurd. Uh, I'm trying not to let my priors. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't really bullish that Camara would be able to. to 
do anything like this, and he's been exceeding all expectations. But he's just so old. He's just so old. Uh, I'm going to go – I'm just going to double-check the wide receivers here. Now, I'm going to – I'm going to. we're going to get back in the bone zone. I'm going to take Kenneth Walker here. I just I love what what's going on with the utilization of him way too much. Injury risk, absolutely. He does seem to be a little bit more fragile uh, than than uh, than other running backs. But he does. Wow, Kyle, he leads the NFL in in red zone opportunities. That's not what it says. Well, I, I'm look. I'm, I want to make sure that people know that the bone zone is the red zone. No, no, I I just threw that in there. Oh, you're just you. because that's his name. Well, no one else is in contention, Kyle. No one else exists inside of the bone zone. Just He's number one. Just Ken. Goodness gracious, Kyle. Distracting me with dumb stats. So you're going Kenneth Walker over Alvin Kamara? I am. The question for me is Kamara or Brees Hall now. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do that one. I bailed out. I also I, I don't I don't know when or if he will go in the top twenty four, but I do want to bring up James Conner's name. Because he ended last year with five straight top five performances. And this year, James Conner's the RB9 this year. Like, he's been dominant. We need more targets, Kyler. Uh, they tried. They they did. Uh, he threw a pick to, he threw a pick to Bosa. Just saying of the. But Conner's been super reliable. He's not. This isn't the pick here. I'm going to take Alvin Kamara. I'll go ahead and do yeah. it. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I get it. I, you know, he was a steal in the draft. He's a steal in this one. Kyle, you're back on the clock. Kamara's off the board after Walker and Bijan, so the running backs for the last five. Who are you taking? I'm going to take a forgotten wide receiver. He played in week one, and then we haven't seen him since. So I would take A.J. Brown. I get it. He might not be 100% right away, but it's been four weeks, and I think he's probably the best wide receiver of this group rest of season. That's I'll a be, good call. I'll be honest. We should have drafted him earlier. That... <laughs> Like it's, that, everything is just so upside down. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's true. I, I do. Because, I would, I mean, I would take AJ Brown over Tyreek Hill right now. That, that's the only one though. Like I'm not, I don't think we've messed no, no, up no, no. another wide receiver because I agree. Amon Ra, Lamb, Neighbors, Jefferson, Jamar Chase, the Tyreek Hill versus AJ Brown. Yeah, maybe that one should be flipped, but you know, both of them have risks at this point. AJ Brown coming off an injury. Philadelphia looks a little bit messy. And then Tyree kills Messi right now. So, Mike, you're back on the clock after the A.J. Brown pick. Okay, so now the question is, do you take someone who is actually producing at the wide receiver position, or do you take the gamble of trying to get a guy who was drafted as a top three running back? At this, If we were really going right now, I think I would do that. I, I'm going to go – I'll take Brees. I'll All take right, Brees Hall right at 16. I'll, I'll end his suffering. It's rare to be reluctantly taking Brees Hall, but that's where we're at. I've got the next pick here. Did, and what um, did Jason say? Like the 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 biggest Brees Hall stan, the biggest defender. How does how does he feel about three yards in attempt on the season? Two point six last week. Point four the week before. There's a reason he's not here. <laughs> he, he's he taken, couldn't stand to face it. What do they call that? Uh, he's taking a um, leave of absence. Leave yeah, of absence. What do what do some of the companies do though? Uh, like a oh, uh, oh yeah. I know what, what like about. a forced vacation? No, they take a week off for like a wellness retreat. There it oh, is. the wellness week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get that mind right. Got to get the mind right, Jason. Uh, no, he's actually um, seeking, you know, some insights. No, I mean, he look. I don't think he feels good. He didn't really acknowledge it a lot. <laughs> he's got him on every roster. I think he just kind of like it's one of those like quiet nod acknowledgments. It's because not, the first three weeks it was fine. The Brees will be better. His his schedule is good. Something changing that offense is is good. Um, we'll take a break. I, I I've got pick seventeen coming up. All right. All right. So uh, the last three picks: Kamara, AJ Brown, and Brees Hall puts me on the clock. Um, I don't know when is the right time to draft Nico Collins, but I don't think it's right now. Not with not because with for sure four weeks out. The, plus he, maybe more. Yeah. I I can't do it. I'm actually going to go with uh I'm gonna go Brian Thomas Jr. at wide I at wide receiver. Didn't know when the right time to draft him was. Now. Now's the right time. I, Pick seventeen overall is the right time. I'm taking Brian Thomas. I 
I just think he is actually a really high floor. I, I with all the upside of being the talented rookie that he is, he's just going to be peppered with targets by this team. So I'm going to go Brian Thomas. Yeah, yeah, they're they're trailing all the time. I think you said on Monday show 1350 is what he's on pace for, which is like only Jamar Chase has ever done that. So um, there's a bunch of wide receivers here that I don't know the order of. So Brian Thomas was one of them. Jaden Reed, yep. Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake yep. London, like all of those guys are around the same. You forgot I'm another gonna, one too, I think. I probably, I probably. Did you say I'll, D, I'll take, did you I think, say DK? I think DK Metcalf and Mike Evans would be two more names to, yes. to think about. Yeah, they're they're right below that for me. I'm going to take Jaden Reed. I need yeah. to take the L on that Andy. Yeah, how's Just, that feel? Uh, how's that take it right in the... The oh, right yeah. in the what, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will select him for my team, Andy. <laughs> couldn't have been, there's, better. There's couldn't no... have been a better sound effect than what you just said. <laughs> there was no... I, I was scrambling cut through. Cut that, cut that, cut that. Through, like, what body part is it going to say? Because it's they're all going to be bad. <laughs> There's not <nothing> good. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Jaden Reed. Take him. <laughs> uh, I'm dead, but also uh, he's number one in fantasy points per route run among all wide receivers. Yeah, so he's, he's awesome. When he's on the field, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, it's been often this year, so uh, it's a good pick. Mike, you are back on the clock. Okay, if I'm here at this point, it it is between three players: it's Drake London, it's DK Metcalf, it's Marv. I, the, the the hot and cold nature of Marv is scary thus far, but he is a rookie. You would expect things to get better over the course of the season. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take Drake London. I'm going to the with again there's the turnaround of what's going on with the the Atlanta Falcons. The targets are absolutely redonkulous right now. Uh 13 targets in the the crazy game. That look that was a that's not normal. However, the week before it was 12 targets. He just he only caught 6 of them. He had an outrageous 12 catches on 13 targets the past week, but they're opening it up. Kirk still doesn't look fully healthy to me. Like it looks like a uh, looks like a lot of effort. I was gonna say it looks like he's working ball. hard. Yeah, it, yeah, it, no, it, it's it not the it's not the just a, a nice casual flick of the wrist. The ball goes flying. He feels it's a little shot putty at the moment, but the ball's getting there. He and he and Kirk is still has the the smarts to get it done. That's so a I'm choice over over Marvin uh, yep. Metcalf. Um, yep, you it's, know it's trying to catch the 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 trajectory. Get on the rocket ship while it's not left orbit yet. All right, I'm going to uh I think a safer risk <laughs> is a funny way to put it. I'm going to take Cooper Cup at 20. Wow, okay. Uh we expect Cooper Cup back next week. Yeah. So you're talking about one week That's without fair. Cooper Cup and he was performing at a a superstar level again. I'm going to take Cooper Cup at 20. I'd take Cooper Cup over Drake London right now, but all right. Probably not the names before it. So, Kyle, you're back on the clock. We got four picks left. I'm going to make it easy. Uh, Mike, if you want to hit that drop, we're oh. going to, never going back to the pants store. Marvin Harrison. Man, Marvin Harrison, it's weird. It's been a weird, really weird. It's been a weird season. It's really weird. Because there's been disappointing weeks. I mean, when, whenever you have a guy that, what, two out of five weeks, you've been super bummed? And yet, explosive number one option. Um, that's a t that's a tough pick to know where to put him, but I like it. All right, three picks left. Mike, you're up next. Then me. Then Kyle to round it out. Uh, we have definitely been here before, where the QB one was so far ahead of everybody in points per game, and then things leveled off. But the Ravens. Like you said, the identity of this team seems focused on Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. And Lamar is almost 25 points a game right now. They're like Jane Daniels has been, you know, the steal of the draft. Lamar is multiple points per game better than him just five weeks into the season. So I'm going to go early QB here. I'm going to take Lamar. 
I don't blame you. I wasn't sure if we'd see a quarterback. I had Lamar and Jaden on the list. I don't want to go another injured gamble with Nico Collins here. I don't think that's the right play. Um, it's tough. You know, Monty's in consideration. Over JT? James Conner, Jonathan Taylor. Um, I get uh, – no, yeah, sorry. James another Connor, hurts. Another hurt guy, James Conner and Jonathan Taylor are a problem because, like, Taylor's around the same production level that Connor's at, but he's got the injury and he's got the quarterback that I don't have confidence in. I get that, yeah. So Jonathan Taylor's probably worthy of the pick. It's just a little bit scary. Um, it's between probably Metcalf and A-Chan. I'm going to take Devon A-Chan. Uh, Dang, okay. With, with again, and the, the bet that you're, you're – I bet that he's only out a week with a concussion. Yeah, and that, that you have a quarterback back after that. I mean, sure. if you're going to miss a week, miss the one where you're on by already and then get your quarterback back quickly and get onto the field on one of the league's best offenses. So I, I want to win the league. You know, like pick, making a pick here of, you know, David Montgomery is not going to win you your league. But Devon Achan could if the offense is back in one piece. So sure. I'll go Achan and then Kyle, your final pick. And why yeah, is it Montgomery, Kirk Cousins? <laughs> Montgomery was in consideration, but I'm kind of with you. It's like I feel safe with him, but upside rest of season. DK Metcalf's also there. But I'm just going to swing for the fence and just say Brock Bowers is the tight end one rest of season. I think he kind of belongs in this second, third round-ish, and he's uh, he's awesome. We talked about on the Dynasty podcast. The lack of Devontae Adams, which is – more than likely permanent now. And if yeah, you, did you notice his hamstring's hurting for one more week? It is, yeah. Uh, it's it's hurting until he gets traded. Yeah. At least that's what it feels like right now. So it, seriously, if, if when Adams is – if he's gone permanently, Brock Bowers is – he's the number one target for that team. And he we already know that he well, – like this dude can play. He can play in the NFL. Plays. He could do a big yeah. play. Um, oh, my God. The, the, the high point yeah. head top ball. Yeah. Whew touchdown nasty had two in that game all right i want to run it back real quick mike i'm going to read the first 12 you take the second 12 okay jamar chase kyron williams saquon barkley justin jefferson malik neighbor cd lamb amon ross st brown Derek henry jameer gibbs james cook tyreek hill and b john robinson ken bone walker alvin Kamara, aj brown Brees Hall, brian thomas jr Jaden reed drake london cooper cup marvin harrison jr lamar jackson devon h and brock bowers all right, definitely give us your feedback. Oh, yeah, let us know what we messed up. Yeah, and uh, what, what egregious oversight exists. I mean, you know, you could uh, – if we if we had another 12 picks, I'm sure there'd be some – you know, Jonathan Taylor would be in there. DK not in the top it, 24 is You know, where, where does – you redraft – let's say you did a full redraft. Uh -huh. Where's Christian McCaffrey? That's a very good question. Cause if also, he's, where, if, where is he right now? And where <laughs> – where, Does anyone know? And where's Jordan Mason then? Like, because if yeah, if you answer the first question, you have to answer the second question. Because if McCaffrey is late, then Mason should be somewhere higher. And that gamble for the rest of the season is potentially league winning. If McCaffrey comes back and is himself, even if he's not himself for five weeks, like if you just told me that, where does he go in the draft? For if, you, if he missed another if you say five McCaffrey, weeks, it, no. If you say McCaffrey comes back in two weeks and he's in full form in, in five, in two weeks. Uh, he if if he came back in two weeks, he would be a first round pick. So you know that's. But that's the question. That Where is the in question. the world is Christian McCaffrey? <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. And uh, don't forget to drop it like it's hot. It's our little weekly reminder on Wednesday. See who your league mates dropped when picking up their waiver wire. Uh, selections because sometimes desperate times call for desperate drops, and they'll put them back. Into the waiver wire, and you oh. can scoop them up tomorrow. Uh, shout out to Xavier Hutchinson of the Houston Texans, who, uh, depending on when the, the Nico news ran and all your waivers went, he seems like he's the next man up for the Houston Texans. That's Just true. Saying. Just saying. Hey, people got nasty, bad situations out there. Play Tolbert first. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. We'll catch you tomorrow. Starts of the week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.